Oh, thanks very much for that, AK. Uh, got to get this screen in shot as well. As you can see, we've got the studio here and the uh, the walls have, uh, have, have creeped out. And we've got a bit of a wider camera today. But thanks very much for that, AK. Happy birthday to me, you beauty. I'm 53 today. I feel like I'm 25. But I've just got to let you all know that when you're a young kid and you have that fifth birthday, that 25-year-old dad that you've got, he seems like he's a granddad. And then you get to the age around about 15, 18, uh, you, you've got that friend group around that particular age. You might play a little bit of senior cricket, but you feel like those 23-year-olds, 25-year-olds are 30, 30 plus. But then when you get to the age of 25, all of a sudden you start to get mates of around the 40 re region and also mates with uh, at the age of 15. And then you're at the age of where I am now, 53, one of my best mates is 80 years old and I've got another mate who's 15. So uh, the age gap of friendship is uh, just widening. So that's just a little bit of a little bit of a touch up there uh, of how I'm feeling today. I'm really wrapped. I just feel like I'm 25. And feeling like I'm 25, I was wish I was out there in England colours the other day facing Boomer with that reverse swing. He was an absolute genius. I thought he was sensational, just getting the ball to move away, move away, and just getting attempting the uh, English batsmen to play away from their body, and they weren't prepared to set themselves up to, for that in-swinger. Now, Michael Bevan, an Australian player that I played with, was one of the best players against reverse swing. His theory was just play for the in-swing where the ball's going to hit your stumps or your pads, you keep your feet out of the road, and when it comes in, you just play with the swing. You either get that one on off stump where you can hit straight or if it's on the legs, you can work it through the gaps on the leg side. If it swings away, you don't chase it. And the England batsman got caught out there chasing. Now, what's our next point, uh, AK? Have we, have we got something there that we're uh, going to bring up there with Bearstow and Ashwin? I just lo I, I love... I love the contest between Ashwin and Bearstow, uh, just the way that they're in your face all the time. It is just the way that I love playing cricket, just a little bit of chirp out there, a little bit of banter, and Bearstow facing Boomer the other day, couldn't get bat on it, missed it, and then Ashwin walks by, and... Uh, Let's just have a look at this. We've got a little bit of video there. Look at this. Look at this. So the finger goes up by the umpire. Beautiful piece of bowling. That was by Boomer. Little in swinger with a rear swing. And it just seemed a little bit. And just look at Ashwin. He just walks past and just gets in Bearstow's face. And Bearstow just gives him a little bit of a serve. Ashwin's just telling him, look, mate, your wicket at this level in Indian conditions is just like what your uh, brand name on your shirt is cinch and I just love that I love that aggression and uh, I loved it when people got stuck into me after I gave a little bit of verbal on the uh, on the ground as well but anyway we'll move on now because we've got a we've got a special guest coming in in a minute uh, one of the viewers we brought that up the other day so uh, his name's Austin I'm really looking forward to chatting to him he's going to ask me some tough questions and we're going to have a little bit of banter as well but I was very impressed with the way that England went about the run chase now you've got to look at the history of overseas teams batting on the fourth innings in India the highest score or that has been made by a touring team is 299 I think it was Sri Lanka that was back in 2017. A lot of people say that England playing this aggressive brand of style, they've got to change it up in certain situations. No, you don't. You've got to get runs on the board. You've got to put pressure on the Indian bowlers. And if you look at their strike rate, they've got the highest strike rate over the last couple of years, I think, uh, of any team. It's in the 70s. So that's over 4.4 runs and over. It is scintillating stuff. It is enjoyable. And they've got a win percentage of over 60%. It's the best win percentage that England have ever had in Test cricket. Now, if you go back to when Australia were dominating through that uh, 2000 period, there was a period between 2000 and 2005 where Australia had a win percentage of 74%. And their strike rate 
was well above opposition teams back then. Australians wanted to make sure that they were scoring 300 on day one or the uh, in the first innings every time they bat. And that's what England want to do. And Australia, when they were batting in the second innings, they wanted to do the same thing. But England have taken it slightly to a new level. And when they're chasing in the back end, they don't want to change that model. And I thought they batted extremely well. They attacked the spinners. I thought the Indian spinners bowled exceptionally well, trying to keep it as tight as they can. They felt like they were playing a one-day game, but they were just trying to control the situation from one end, knowing that Boomerer was in full flight with a reverse swing. And that's how you bowl as a team. Some days the conditions aren't going to suit you, uh, and that's where you've got to be a little more defensive and allow the bowler who's got the conditions in their favour to really take charge, and India did that. And I think the difference between the two teams was Gill's 100 in the second innings. He's out of form, but India won by uh, 100-odd runs, but also the inexperience of the England spinners on day one. They just bowled too many loose balls that allowed India to find easy boundaries. They just couldn't build the pressure for long enough in that first innings. But I like the way that India are backing those youngsters, and they fought back well, and uh, they nearly got their team back into a, 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 a reasonable position to win the game. And uh, I thought it was a great test match. And I've got to have accolades to Jimmy Anderson as well. 41 years of age, bowling pace on Indian conditions and just beating uh, the bat consistently with the new ball and the old ball. It was a great contest between old and new when he was bowling to Jaswell early on in the innings. Um, hey, AK, uh, can we get the um, – oh, before we get to Austin on, Let's go to the dirty plays over the last couple of weeks. I've just got a couple of scenarios here. The first one, I'm going back to the first test match with folks trying to stump Siraj where he's jumped out of the crease or uh, he's in the crease, he's missed the ball, and folks is behind waiting to take off the stumps. We've got a little bit of a highlight here. There's just a little bit of a delay with the feed on the internet. But I, I love the thought process of folks here. But the only thing that I can really, uh, I, I really don't like about this is that Iraj is balanced in the crease. He's missed the ball. And we've got a little bit of a delay with the video. We know what's uh, going to happen next. He's missed the ball. And he's well behind the crease here. He's in balance. And all of a sudden, because of his hyperactivity, he jumps in the air and the bales have been taken off and he's been nearly given out stumped. Lucky he got his feet back in the ground. I don't like this um, and I am going to have a go at folks for this because I don't think it's in the spirit of cricket. If he was overbalanced in a position where he was going to fall out of the crease, fair enough. Now, I'll go to the scenario when Kerry ran out Bairstow in the second test match at Lords in the Ashes series. Now, Bairstow marked the crease behind and he walked out and Kerry threw the stumps down there. I didn't think that was in the spirit of cricket at that stage as well uh, because both batsmen were balanced in the crease. Now, I like your comments down the side on that, and we'll get Austin uh, up there and have a look at that. And then we've got a bit of a scenario um, uh, in the under-19s where the English player picked up the ball uh, when it was dead and gave it to the Zimbabwean keeper, and the Zimbabweans appealed, and he was out handling the ball. Yes, um, you, don't want to be, you don't want to be handling the ball in cricket uh, as such, but when the ball's dead and nothing's happening with the play, I don't mind it where you're just doing the right thing, picking it up uh, and giving it to the keeper because it's sitting under your body. If the ball was a metre or two away and you picked it up and, and gave it to the fielder, well, fair enough. But in this particular situation, I think it was way over the top by the Zimbabwean team and you shouldn't be looking to get wickets like this. Now, AK, I hope you've got the video of this one. There's a Shield game happening here in West Australia out the beloved Wacker here, the fastest pitch in the world. And um, 
hopefully uh, we've got the video up okay. If you haven't, just come online and just say no quickly. Um, but we'll wait for that to happen. But basically what's happened, the bowler from Western Australia has bowled the ball. Green, the batsman from Sydney or New South Wales, has hit the ball back to the bowler. He's overbalanced. He's a couple of feet outside of the crease. He just stands there. The bowler throws the ball back out the keeper and the batsman just stands there and bounces it back. Now, the ball has been thrown out the feet. It's not dangerous for the batsman. The batsman didn't try and get out of the road at all, but he just bunted it back in front of the stumps. Now, for me, not getting back or not attempting to get back into your crease and just hitting the ball like that, you are out. Now, we'll get that up and uh, we'll take a little snippet of that and we'll put it on Instagram down the track. Now, we're going to get little Austin uh, online now. Austin's 22 years of age. He's from Bangalore. And um, here we go. Who are your favourite cricketers? How are you going, Austin? Hi. Welcome. A very, very happy birthday to you, sir. <laughs> oh, mate, it's, it's sensational. No, thanks for getting on. Yeah. And uh, you're talking to Thank a Thank you, sir. My pleasure. You're talking to a 53-year-old and you're no, 22. Sir, a 25-year-old, just like yeah, you said. Yeah. Feel like you're yeah. 25. The energy yep, is the yep. same. Yep. Beautiful, mate. Beautiful. Well, you shouldn't be feeling like 25. You're 22, so you should be feeling like you're <laughs> yeah. 18. But yes, um, sure. firstly, just going back to the folks' um, attempt to stump yes, and sir. the Kerry dismissal. You remember Kerry um, yes, throwing sir, down the, the stump? Yeah. Do you agree with me with that or do you have a different opinion? And if you've got a different opinion, that is fantastic. No, like I feel that um, if a batter is trying, it's happening unintentional. It's not like even with the Bairstow incident, it was unintentional. Like if yep. you compare that dismissal with a manker, with a uh, non-striker run out, then there the batsman is trying to seek an additional adva disadvantage. So there if you actually yep. uh, run out the batter, then it's fair. But I feel what Kerry did and what folks tried to do in the first test is actually not unfair because the batter is unintentionally going out of the crease or is not actually doing anything intentional over there or trying to get a disadvantage. So whatever folks did and whatever Kerry did also, I don't agree with that because it's it's not, um, you know, when you're playing cricket, it's not going with the moral spirit of playing cricket with. So I totally agree with you that um, folks, you have to take a go at folks. Because uh, uh, because it's not it's not done it's not uh, how you play cricket and uh, if you have to get the batter out stumped then it should happen in, uh, in the mode of dismissal as it should be and not uh, like this not like how it happened so uh, that's it's, my it's, take uh, on it. Yep, no, I, I totally agree with you as well. Um, ben, folks, before we get into the questions that you're going to ask me, yes, I said the other day on you uh, on on my channel that he is as good as Dhoni um, uh, as, as a keeper. And I think he's been better than Dhoni in, uh, with Dhoni in the last five years because Dhoni's a little bit older. But when yeah. Dhoni was out the peak, I think they are very similar keepers. They've got different strengths, but I think they're as good as, uh, as each other. Do you agree with me on that or not? Uh, I I've, <laughs> I actually don't agree with you, sir, because uh, MS Dhoni is actually like I don't – I can't even think of another better keeper than him. Like, there can be a better keeper better than him. I agree mm -hmm. with that. But not a better keeper than him because the way he used to uh, get run out, stumpings, and even he has recorded a dismissal, which is a world record, a 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 seconds. There is a record which he had done a few years back. So, and uh, there, any batter will not have the confidence to run a, uh, a two also if Dhoni is the keeper. Like if you have to take a risky single, so you're like MSD is the keeper, so you're not going to run. So I don't agree with that. Folks is the best keeper uh, in the world right now. I have to agree um, because Ridiman Saha was a good keeper. Uh, but uh, yeah, now he's not active player. So in the world, I uh, agree totally actively in test cricket is the best keeper in the world, Ben Folks. But uh, as compared to MS Dhoni, I don't agree with that because MS Dhoni was in a different class altogether in terms of keeping. So, but it's your opinion, and I respect that. No, no, I, I, I agree with you. I think M. Estoni had the quickest hands, especially when oh, yeah. it uh, went to stumpings. He had great pair of hands. Both of them have got good pair of hands. But I think M. Estoni, his strength was his quick hands. 
and I think folks, because he's a little taller, he's got more reach. Yeah. Um, and I, I think they're very similar in their glove work. But, I, yeah, you, you can't beat MS, Stoney. But anyway, let's get into the questions that you want to ask me. So, and make them tough too. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. So, so my first question is related to the uh, test match itself. Uh, so do, do you think uh, England went a bit too hard yesterday with, the, with their aggressive cricket and whatever the baseball they call it? So because it wasn't needed, I feel, I felt, because it could have been chaseable with the pitch, especially the pitch was true and it was, uh, it was fair and they, the batters could actually score runs on it easily. And uh, even the Indian spinners were struggling to take wickets, if you see. So even they have a bit better batting depth in their, uh, with their tail. So I feel the shot which Joe Root, especially a batter of his class, if he had uh, given himself some time, he could have actually scored 100 on this track. Uh, there's no doubt of his class. And uh, the Stokes run out also, I felt he was a bit lazy while running over there. That run, I know Shreyas Iyer's throw was uh, fantastic. There was no doubt about that. But I felt yeah. like he was running a bit lazy if he had given a bit more effort. So I feel if those two incidents had not happened, England could have actually got the match close because only 106 runs deficit. So they could have actually got the match close. So what do you think? What's your opinion? Do you think they went a bit hard on their uh, aggressive batting? I totally agree with you because Crowley in the first innings um, got out in a similar way to Root as well. And Crowley yeah. was dominating the bowling there. And yeah. uh, when you're in that aggressive mood, I, I think it's fine to go after the bowling. But sometimes you play a shot that's not quite there. And yeah. it's happened a number of times in this England team. Um, so they're, they're, they're playing something that's not quite there. And that's what happened to Root and Crowley. The intent is right. Being aggressive to the spinners who weren't being dominant is right because you yeah. want to make sure uh, you're asking the captain of India to bring back Boomerer, who's going to be yeah. their dominant force with the reverse swing. So you're trying exactly. to get Boomerer to bowl more or, or longer smell spells uh, did, I was about to say smells there, spells, um, uh, longer spells to try and wear him out so that he doesn't have that dominance. So I think England had the right intent, but just when you're going to play like that every now and then, you are going to make the wrong decision with a shot where you're not quite there and you feel as though you still got to go with a shot um, and you can't adjust because your feet aren't yeah. in a, a, a position to adjust. And I think if you go back into uh, previous years where other teams um, or the, the, the run rates were a lot lower, where it was around about three, three or less and over, batsmen you used to try and bat for long periods of time and wear the bowling attack down. And if you look over the last couple of years when India had Pajara in the team, that was Pajara's yeah. role. And Pajara yeah. was one of the best test batsmen going around. But I think Sorry. test cricket's moving forward now. And I think it's moving forward for the better where you're playing more aggressive cricket and every team's trying to get the win rather than look for the draw. And I think that is a better spectacle for test cricket. And I think that's um, if we keep playing like that, test cricket is going to survive. So a very yes, good sir. question. Nice. Very good question. Thank yeah. you so much. Sir. Thank you yeah. so much. Uh, I want to ask you about uh, your career. There was uh, uh, You made your test debut uh, versus India in India uh, in 1996 yep. in Delhi. So I wanted to ask you, how was your experience that time? Like, what did you exactly feel? And uh, I want to even ask you a question that uh, if you had made your debut in the current generation, especially uh, imagine you were an Australian cricketer uh, right now and you made your debut playing the last year's Border Gavaskar Trophy. And you, uh, you actually made your debut, imagine playing in the pitches uh, which India produced right now. Do you think you would have fared better or how, how do you think you would have gone uh, while bowling in these pitches. Uh, so I just wanted to ask you overall, what's your experience of debuting that time and how would you go about if it was this time? Right, yeah, I'll go, I'll go back to the first, first question, going back to 1996. I debuted for WA, uh, West Australia here in Shield Cricket in 1994. So that was January 1994. Um, actually, uh, I think it was great going to February uh, because it was two days before my 23rd birthday. I was picked as a batsman. In the nets the day before the game, 
I got asked to bowl left arm leg spin or left arm Chinamans. I can I can say Chinamans because I identify as a Chinaman if you get the uh, PC joke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I got asked to bowl left arm Chinamans in the nets because uh, New South Wales had a bowler, Freddie Freeman, a left arm Chinaman. And I've looked at Tony Mann, who played uh, for Australia. He's a, he was a leg spinner himself from West Australia. He made an, uh, 100 as a night watchman against India out the Wacker many moons ago. But he asked me to bowl these. And I said, how do you bowl them? I've, I've never seen a left arm Chinaman in my life. So he yeah. flicked a couple to me. So I, I bowled some to the batsman out the crease. He goes, oh, they're landing pretty well. What about bowler wrong? How do we do that? He showed me and I landed them. And he said, you should stick with that. Another string to your bow. So all of a sudden, um, I start bowling them. Two years later, I'm over in India and I was meant to be there um, under as the understudy to Shane Warne, but Shane Warne did his shoulder at that stage. And they mm. uh, looked out the pitch. They had McIntyre there as well. And they said, all oh, right, we need two spinners. We've got mm. to play Brad Hogg. Okay, yeah. I've got my test debut. So I'm out there, very inexperienced. I've only been bowling these for a year and a half. And I remember my first wicket. I'm bowling to Ganguly. I've uh, had a couple of overs to him over the wicket, and then I decide to come around the wicket. Mark Taylor, the captain, comes up to me and goes, Hoggy, why are you coming around the wicket? I said, Mark, just for something different. And he goes, well, what's your game plan to the batsman? I said, mate, I'm no shame worn. I've just been bowling these for a year and a half. All yeah. I know is just to try and put it on a good length and try and put pressure on the batsman. I still haven't worked out the art of angles and and so forth to uh, work the batsman out. He goes, that's fine. Let's sort it out. So he set the field for Ganguly. Um, just a, a deep um, sweeper just behind square on the fence, a mid-wicket in, uh, on catching mid-wicket and a mid-on. We're going to have three on the leg side. Ganguly doesn't really like to sweep fine. He likes to sweep hard. So we're going to try and get him to sweep hard in front of square. Hopefully we get a top edge. Um, and um, anyway, I bowled the first ball around the wicket. Ganguly charges me, hits me for six over mid-on. I'm out there. I've let go of the ball and I've got my tongue out as usual and it's getting burnt in the Delhi sun, goes over mid-on. I look at Mark. The plan's not going that well, mate. He goes, that's all right. It was just a bit too quick, too flat, and you just didn't give him uh, that opportunity where he had to change his line of direction to the line of the ball. Bowled this one slow with revolutions on it and a little bit wider so he can't charge straight down the line. So I did, and I got Ganguly caught first slip by Mark Wall. Wow. It wasn't uh, it wasn't a, just an outside edge. It was a top edge. He's tried to sweep me. The extra bounce, Mark Wall has to run 40 metres to take the catch. You beauty. That was my first wicket and only wicket in that test match, and I, I uh, remember that. It was a, it was a great feeling. Um, I remember batting. We were in trouble in the second innings. I think it was day three. I'm batting with Steve Wall. We bat through um, that night, and Steve Wall, uh, as we're walking off, says, Hoggy, um, you've made 100 in Shield cricket. I reckon you and I can save the day for um, – for Australia tomorrow and bat all day uh, here. And we're walking off and the stadium that you've got there now, you know, the stand behind the bowlers, the mm -hmm, old stand, yeah. it had a yeah. massive crack about that wide going out the middle of it. And oh. I just said to Steve Waugh, I said, I'm not really worried about batting tomorrow for uh, saving Australia. I'm batting tomorrow to save my life <laughs> because I don't want to <laughs> sit in this stand because it might crumble. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the next day I got out to Kumbalay Caught bat pad exactly the same way I got out to Kumbalay in the first inning. So I hadn't hurt my lesson. So I think I walked away from that game with a top score of four uh, and an average of 2.5. So I remember that. Um, but Mongi made 100 that game. He was he was unbelievable. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was, it was just sensational feeling. And, you know, um, I, wasn't, I wasn't ready for test cricket at that stage. And if you're going forward to now, um, it, it depends. It depends what sort of upbringing I had, um, how how you fit in, because it's a different time. But looking at the wickets right now, um, I, I 
you know, I, I think, I, I think, um, I, d- I don't think things would happen any differently to what happened back in 1996 because it was spin, spin friendly wicket then. And, yeah. uh, I, I wasn't experienced enough with the ball. I'd only been bowling it for one and a half years. I wasn't experienced enough with the ball to understand how to operate that. And I've come from the whacker where there's extra bounce. Overspin, I'm hitting the bat high up. All of a sudden, there's a little bit lower bounce there, easier to sweep, and I didn't have the armoury to be able to uh, uh, attack that type of shot. And plus, the f- footwork of uh, the Indian batsman was yeah. sensational. I love the way that Indian batsmen play spin. Pin. They play right back. They work you through square leg uh, for ones, or if it's wide, they'll cut you. They'll punish you off the back back foot. And that's coming off a good length. They'll make you bowl a li- couple of inches a little longer, uh, um, further. And once you bowl that couple of inches, they're straight out and getting on that front foot and uh, driving you. And it was very difficult to bowl to the Indian batsman because of the way they uh, they they played against you. Good question. Yeah. Did I answer that well enough for you? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I feel you would have gone uh, better at these pitches uh, if you had made your debut here. Because you see, not because like of the pitches. Because the way Indian players play left arm spin, especially because you've seen yeah. last year uh, in the Australia series, Matthew Cunningham took a fifer, and uh, mm-hmm. now uh, England spinner Tom Hartley takes a fifer. So uh, especially with your action, and you see Kuldeep Yadav as a almost a similar action. He's mm-hmm. also a left arm Chinaman baller, so he's also successful a lot on these type of pitches, even if it's getting a little bit of turn. So the way he bowls, so I feel that if you uh, you also had a similar bowling action, so. You would have got it would have been a bit uh, better because uh, because mm. you already have have the skills the experience obviously does matter but uh, having the skills of bowling especially in Australian conditions and picking up wickets there yes and then coming to India I feel you would have gone even more better uh, in these pitches as well so uh, even if it was a yeah. bit flat I, I do I do I, agree with you there I do agree with you there in a sense that um, uh, batsmen are a little bit more aggressive at test level now. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, sort of my career was made against one day cricket where you could have a more de- a little more defensive field. And with yeah. batsmen being more aggressive, and my weakness was patience, um, it, it would have probably brought me into the game a little bit more in today's circuit. So yeah. you are right in that, that aspect. But I, I just think back then um, I would have needed another couple of years under my belt to have that experience to just be able to handle – um, the other aspects of it. I, I do remember we um, India needed to chase something like 63 in that um, second innings, in their final innings, and uh, of that 1996 test match, Mark Taylor didn't give me a bowl. And it, uh, India still needed 20 runs to win, but I still just wanted that ball. I wanted to save the day for Australia. I, I still had that belief that I might be able to get 10 wickets, even though... Um, yeah. You know, I, I had the confidence there, but I didn't have the experience. But I, I just wanted to be in the fight. And I think um, it, the comment I made about Bearstow and Ashwin and even Verrick Coley, the thing I lo- love about them is they want to be in the fight. And yeah. uh, that's that's what you play international cricket for. Sometimes you're going to go over the line. Other times, other times you're not. Um, but you're better off pushing the boundaries, having a little bit of fun and banter, as long as that you create those positive relationships off the field. And I think that's that's uh, the beauty of IPL cricket at the moment. It's bringing the different cultures together. Yeah. So, sir, now I want to put you on the spot there. Uh, oh, with, with regards to uh, India's T20 World Cup uh, squad for the upcoming World Cup. So, uh, I want to... Um, ask you a question like what is your 15 according to you uh, for that uh, world cup and uh, how would you fit yashasvi jaiswal and rinku singh in india's first 11 top 6 how would you fit both of them uh, in the same 11 because both are in tremendous form both are playing the t20 cricket the brand of t20 cricket which is required for india but one of them may have to miss out so what's your take on that so this is where I find it very difficult picking the uh, the Indian team because if Virat Kohli is going to play, I'd like him opening the batting with Rohit Sharma. But the simple mm. fact is I think that's where he's dominant. He can use the pace yeah. of the ball with the field up and his timing uh, brings him into the game. Yeah. Whereas out the back end, um, I, I just think you need those bigger hit- hitters. And if you can have both 
one of Rowett and Virat Kohli batting through the innings, that's just perfect stabilisation because then you've got yeah. all the youngsters that are more aggressive and taking taking the game on and taking the game to a new level. Um, that uh, that that is creating an interesting dynamic and balance in that Indian team. Um, for me, Surya Kumar Yadav, he's got to bat out three or four. Um, where do you put Venkatesh Iyer? Uh, do you fit KL or Rahul in there as well? Um, no, Vicky Gibson. Uh, uh, yeah, Sanju Sampson or KL Rahul as, yeah. as the, the wicket keeper. We'll when are you going to pull the plug? Yeah, when, when are you going to pull the plug on, on Rahul and maybe go for a Sanju Sampson in that uh, middle order who's a little bit more aggressive? And then you've got Tilak Varma, who I spent a bit of time with um, – uh, before the IPL with the Mumbai Indian second team last year, oh. I think I think he's a fantastic player. He's got a good head on his shoulders. Um, I'm surprised that he actually hasn't been uh, given an opportunity in this this Test series because I, do, I just I love the way that he goes about it. He might not have the runs on the board, but I think just with his approach to the game, the way he thinks about it, I think he could be a leader for Indian cricket down down the track. Um, but obviously. He's got to perform and, and take runs. Rinku Singh, uh, I just love that he's come out of left field, yeah. and uh, and and it's it's just such a great story. I'd like to give him an opportunity as well. Then you've got Hardik Pandya. You want Hardik Pandya in yeah. there uh, exactly. as an all-round option, and I think the strength there is you've got Hardik Pandya and Jadeja, who can give you uh, good batting depth, but also good bowling depth. So you've got that extra bowler. So for me. Uh, Robert Sharma and Virat Kohli have got to bat out the top to be able to bring youngsters in. I think Sanju Sampson coming out three would be a fantastic uh, choice because he does that for Rajasthan Royals and he's made runs under pressure. Um, Kumar Yadav, Suri Kumar Yadav, I've always rated him. Uh, I, th- I thought um, uh, he's been yeah. given a role out yeah. the Mumbai Indians where he's really lapped it up. I think out KKR, I just think he had too many different roles he didn't know where he was, and uh, yeah. I think the Mumbai Indians' move was was fantastic for him. He's out four. Uh, um, then you've got Rinku, Rinku. Yeah, Rinku out five, Aye. and Hardik yep. at six. Hardik out six. Jadeja out seven. Jadeja or Akshar? Do you think there is a competition there? Jadeja or Akshar Patel? Well, we're we're in the West Indies as well, so you might yeah. you might have the you might have the possibility where you can actually play both. But yeah, they're, they're, they're both uh, they're both left arm off spinners. I think I'd go with Jadeja. Washington Sundar, uh, I can play at eight. Washington Sundar with a bit of yeah, off yeah, Washington Sundar. Yeah, he, he have you uh, gives you batting depth as well. Yeah, um, number eight. Yeah, so seven, seven and eight. I, I think you've got to look out. Jadeja over in West Indies conditions. Axa Patel's a little taller. Uh, and gets that extra bounce. Yeah. Jadeja a little lower, but Jadeja with the field and bat uh, gives you more depth than than what Axa Patel does. So I'd slightly go in with Jadeja, knowing that I've got Hardik Pandey to bowl a few overs uh, yeah. from at number six. Um, and then I'm looking at the bowlers. I'd like to have Kuldeep Yadav in there, uh, yeah, something Kuldeep different, Yadav. left arm leg, leg, leg spin, yeah. um, turning the ball differently to uh, Jadeja. Yeah, and then Shami. Yeah, Shami and, and Boomerang Boomer. have to be in there. Yeah, I, I, I still have got a a, a big um, love for Siraj. Um, yeah, Siraj. Yep, yep. But he he hasn't been performing of uh, he hasn't been performing at his best over the last year. But I think he's going to have a big IPL this year, and uh, I, I yeah, I I think. He's going to learn his lessons over the last couple of years, and I, I just love the way that he gets in there and plays. So yeah. I think um, uh, C-Rage is one. There's another guy that I really love um, is um, uh, Avish Khan. I just Avish love Khan. the way that he he tries to go about the business, but I don't think he's in the eleven. But then I'd look for a deep left arm. Ashdeep. Yeah, Ashdeep. Yep. Uh, I, I'd I'd look at a left arm. Uh, swing option as well, and I'd, I'd probably go with Arsdeep um, in front of Siraj out the present moment because mm. he gives you that variety. Again, you've got Hardik Pandya to make up some overs if if need be. So that that's probably how I'd see the eleven. Um, so yeah, that, that, yeah, I think other people will have different opinions, and I hope they put those opinions up down the side there. 
Yeah, sure, yeah. sir, sure, sure. Yep, yep. Yeah. Hang on, let's just uh, have um, AK now. AK is the guy behind the scenes. Um, now, all right, we've got Tilna Vindana. Is this right? Have you, have you, um, can you throw some questions up there, um, AK? Uh, I've just got one here just before I answer that one from Surav. Tilna says, you, you still can play. So many times you proved that. Yeah. Uh, you and Hodge play 2012 or uh, T20 World Cup. Uh, my English is not great. Uh, Tilna, it's not about the English. It's about the message that you're out there, and it's great that you've had a crack on there. So well done on that. And just talking about Brad Hodge, what I loved about coming over to India, I was commentating with Shiva Ramakrishnan uh, many moons ago. Uh, this was back in uh, 2010 or 11 when I had a break from cricket. I walk out. We'll, uh, Sri Lanka were playing India at Bourbon Stadium. I walked out the back of the commentary box and the Indian crowd were going, Hodge, Hodge, Hodge. So they were calling me Hodge instead of Hog. And then I went back in and uh, Shiva Ramakrishnan and I were on the, um, on the commentary and uh, Shiva goes, Hoggy, I don't understand how you don't get some of the Indian names right. Um, especially mine. I said, well, Shiv, I've only got three letters in my name. You added, uh, the Indians are adding a D to it because they're calling me Hodge. You seem to have the whole English alphabet in your name. So um, we had a bit of a laugh there. But Tilna, that is a great question. All right, I, um, okay, can you get that question up, please? I think it was from Suraj. Yeah, Suraj. Solanke, sir, don't you think Ajinka Rahani should get a comeback chance in for Shreyas Iyer? Look, I'd, I, um, Ajinka Rahani is probably one of my favourite Indian players that I've played uh, played with. I've got a lot of admiration mm. for him. Um, I'd love to see him back in the Indian team, but I, I don't think. Uh, the way that the game's going now, that Ajinka Rahani um, would fit in there. I think uh, even though Shri Asai is out of form and I don't like the way that he's playing the short ball at the present moment, I, th I still think they should give him another couple of opportunities. But someone like Ajinka Rahani, when they go to England and England, if he's still nimble on yeah. his feet, uh, he can play the moving ball, he can do a bit of a Pajara role, uh, in that middle order and stabilise the innings and bat for long periods of time. So I think when when India go offshore, off Indian soil, uh, to the places like South Africa, England and Australia, uh, he still might be able to play a role because of the, um, the issues that I just said. I think Shreya Sire against that short ball on bouncy wickets struggles a bit. What do you think, Austin? No, uh, I actually feel uh, Ajinkya Rane, uh was dropped a bit unfairly because... Uh, if you remember in the WTC final, he had scored 89 when no other Indian batsman uh, could score a 50. Virat got out at 49. And uh, that chase and uh, Ajinkya Rahane actually fought in that uh, match. And then he had, uh, then he went to West Indies and a couple of innings didn't go his way. He got out early. And on the basis of that, uh, India moved on from him. So, yep. Shreya Sayer's last 12 innings is averaging 17 in Test cricket, which is mm. not, uh, which is not a, a good impression right now. So, I feel that especially because uh, there is an Australia series coming up and Rahane had uh, scored 100 at MCG in the last time India came over there and he won as a game. So, keeping all that in mind, I feel that Rahane probably should be given a chance uh, in the upcoming home tests, probably not this series, but India playing Bangladesh and New Zealand later in September and October before coming to Australia. So, I feel if India don't find a better number six uh, somewhere around there, so then Ajinkya Rani should be given a go. Uh, uh, but then it depends because uh, his, uh, off late his Ranji Trophy performances have not been that great. Uh, so, yeah. But I feel that he has been treated a bit unfairly. But yeah, mm. that's that's my opinion. No, I, I, I agree with you. I, I think someone like that, India could think about going, right, Ajinkya, uh, uh, you're not going to play here on Indian soil, but we're going to let you go and play yeah. county cricket. And yeah. uh, if you make runs in county cricket, then you're going to be in our uh, visions for the Test Series over yeah, there in England like and Australia. So good point there. 
Uh, there's there's a young Khan that's making runs in the under 19s for India as well. Mushir Khan. Yeah. yeah I, he's the brother of Sarfraz Khan. He's the brother yeah, of Sarfraz. I think he's. I think he's going to be to be better than Safraz. I, I, mm-hmm. Safraz is uh, has got a lot of ability, got a lot of talent, and um, yeah, yeah I, I, he's he's someone that could be there or thereabouts. I'm, I'm not sure where he's going to uh, going to fit in down the track. Uh, we've got another question there. AK behind the scenes there. Uh, Anupam Dev Boman, did I get that right, Austin? Yes, Anupam Dev Boman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, should India go for four spinners and one pacer in Raj Kot? They're saying Bumrah no, is going to be rested. Uh, who's going to come in for him? Uh, Siraj. They're, according to Crickbus, that's the information which came yesterday evening. So Siraj may come in place of Bumrah. That's what I, I, uh, the news is, but then we should see. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think that's a great move because you want to make sure that you rotate your fast bowlers. Fast bowlers are gold at the moment. They, they are gold. If you have a fast bowler that breaks down, especially someone like Boomer who's uh, had plenty of injuries, then all of a sudden your whole year is um, is ruined. So you've got to make sure you yeah, protect your it. fast bowlers. Uh, I don't think they should go with four spinners. I think they should continue with what they've got right now, three spinners and a pacer. And I think this will be good for um, Siraj as well because he's going to be the lead pacer He um, and he gets that spot to himself. He doesn't have Shami around. He doesn't have Boomer around. Yeah. He's the number one bowler. And I, th- I think he thrives thrives on pressure um, and he he wants to take uh, those big moments. And that's what I love about Siraj and that's why I still think he's in the T20 World Cup options is because – he doesn't shy away from the tough moments, even when things aren't going right for him. Do you agree with me, Austin? Yeah. Yes, sir. Because especially Siraj is that kind of a baller, like kind of like Stuart Broad, that on his best day, he can actually destroy a batting lineup. Like you've seen his spells against Sri Lanka in the Asia Cup, in ODIs, and even in the World Cup. And even the in the Test Series against South Africa, that 6 for 15 which he had taken, that he just broke the back of the whole batting lineup. He just won the game single-handedly. Uh, in that yeah. test match, so uh, yeah, so that that his ability is that on his good day he can literally destroy an opposition. So even Stuart Brody should do the same thing. Uh, he's, yep. He scored a yeah, he had a eight four against Australia in the Ashes, and all that. So on his good day, he used to rattle an opposition. So yep. Siraj having Siraj, there's an advantage with that for any lineup, any bowling line. Yep, beautiful. Now, uh, next question, please. Oh, your thoughts on Broomer as in-swinger Yorker to Ollie Pope. Oh, my God. That was absolutely sensational. I think I've only ever seen one ball better than that, and that was Shane Bond bowling to me in the 2003 World Cup. Uh, I've walked out, and Australia were in a bit of trouble. I thought, this is my moment to do something with the bat. And uh, I, I knew that he was quick, but he was a little bit quicker than I thought. He got me on the big toe before I got the bat, bat uh, a metre near it. And it was just a scintillating Yorker. And it was just great, even though I got a golden duck. It was just, a, a, a you know, you look back at it and you go, that's a great experience to be able to actually face it out in the middle. Yeah, and one then one. you, yeah. And then you see something like uh, Ollie Pope. You can actually understand Ollie Pope's dilemma. So, do you reckon yeah. that was one of the better balls of the Test match? Oh, my. that was crazy! You can watch it on loops, sir, like again and yeah. again, and not even feel tired because that was a sensational ball. I mean, nothing can match it. Like, uh, it's probably already the ball of the series or ball of the year. We don't know. So, yeah, it's, it's yeah, it crazy. definitely is the ball of the. Year. And that that that's the thing. I think um, fast bowlers out there. If you just watch Boomer. He, he and uh, other other fast bowlers out there that are really on song. Even Anderson, if you're watching Anderson, it's it's just a great lesson for fast bowlers. You're working yeah. the batsman over. You're trying to work out how how you're going to get him out. The ball's reverse swinging. You don't want to be attacking in swinging all the time because then the batsman's getting used to it, and they can uh, they they can start hitting you straight down the ground. So it's about a little bit of variety, and it's just hitting that good length, swinging the ball away, swinging the ball away, and then just the odd Yorker 
uh, there. And then every now and then you use your bouncer as a surprise delivery. And if you yeah. use the bouncer as a surprise de delivery, it's a chance of getting a wicket, especially when you've got someone who likes to play the hook shot. And yeah. the bouncer can be very ex effective even if you're a medium pacer that swings the ball as long yeah. as you don't bowl it too much. So I think the Yorker sometimes can be used, utilised a little bit more in test cricket. Do you agree with that? Yes, sir. Sure, sir. I mean, that's his uh, speciality, right? especially from his starting years itself. Uh, he has been working on his Yorker from small and he, he himself told it yesterday that uh, he liked watching bowlers, uh, bowl Yorkers, especially Zahir Khan and uh, uh, James Anderson himself. So, yeah. so he used to like uh, bowlers bowling Yorkers more. And even you've seen Anderson getting wickets like that at times. But he, he, uh, he like relies more on the swing. But uh, Boomra's impact, especially I was thinking that if you actually add Boomra's impact as a, a test fast bowler and Anderson's longevity, so you can have the best uh, fast bowler of all time. Just imagine. Exactly right. Yep. It, it, and that, that's that's exactly right. And I think if you go to Dale Stone, who probably had the best strike rate in uh, international yeah. or test cricket, he he had extreme pace when he was young. But he yeah, was like yeah. Dennis Lilly, and he learned from Dennis Lilly that you can't bowl fast day in, day out. You can't bowl 140 plus day in, day out. You've got to bowl yeah. within yourself. And when the moment comes where you think, right, the game's going to be opened up, that's where you can really crank it up with the pace. So, okay, we've got another question there. All right. Oh, sort of. Oh, Ankit Rai. Is that right? Ankit Rai, Austin? Ankit Rai. Ankit Rai. Yeah, Ank Ankit Rai. Yeah. Sir, what do you think about Zach Crawley Wicket? Which one was yeah. Zach Crawley? It, it, it was that controversial. I think he's talking about the controversial dismissal. Because actually, if you see, uh, it was actually probably everyone thought it's not out. Like when he got out yesterday, uh, Zach Crawley, when he got out yesterday, and uh, the Empire actually gave it, uh, he gave it not out, I guess. Yeah, he gave it not out. And then it actually, when India took the review, it was out. That ball was supposed to turn off Kuldeep, and, but it actually went straight and hit. So, and even Ben Stokes told it that technology got it wrong uh, that time. He told it yesterday after the match. So, I, I think... Yeah, um, yeah. I, 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 yeah now I, I, I remember it because I, I, I've got Zach Crawley the first innings playing like Root. We discussed that ah, earlier yeah, on yeah, today. Yeah, exactly, yeah. But it was a ball that I wanted to bring up with Kuldeep, uh, Kuldeep Yadav on the show because I thought Kuldeep bowled really well. I think he's really yeah, improving. Really well. He's getting a lot of bounce. But I think I when I looked at that... I felt it was the back spinner. If I've got a ball behind me, I don't have a ball behind me at the moment. Um, hang on. Yeah. So I've got the mallet here, so I'm going to just use the mallet here. <laughs> so the ball's going, <laughs> the ball's going down as such. Um, there we go. The ball's going down as such. And that tells me that it's a bit of a backspinner from Cool Deep. If he's got it yeah. going 45, that that seems to me that he's trying to get a little bit more overspin. Yeah, yeah. So when it's going down like that, it's a backspinner. Sometimes it grips in the pitch and turns massively. Sometimes it goes straight on. And that yeah. was an attempted ball that went straight on. I think there was a ball before uh, to Crawley where he swept off the same length mm. that was on a similar line. Um, and then the next ball that he – and that got swept for one. And two balls later, Crawley's back on strike. He's bowled the same line, similar length, and Crawley's played back rather than forward. And I felt it was hitting leg stump. So it was Crowley's, yeah, it was Crowley's fault for playing back rather than forward to that particular ball. So mm. um, I, I think yeah. he was just – he had a different mindset as it was coming to the end of the over. So um, for me, I, th I thought it was out. And it's very good that an, an Indian supporter has um, come in and realised that there could have been a bit of controversy there. Um, yeah. So it would have been, it would have been nice for Crawley to continue because it would have brought the game a little bit closer. <laughs> closer, surely. <laughs> and yeah. Crawley played for the Perth Scorchers here in uh, in uh, WA, so I like him for that fact. But I yeah, played with yeah. Kuldeep Yardov at KKR, and Kuldeep uh, Yardov is a left-arm leg spinner. So the umpire got it right. 
Sorry, Zach. Uh, <laughs> all right, have we got another question there, AK? Oh, yep. Oh, Genwell Bolandris. Is that? Um, yeah. Yep. Blandris. Okay, what do we uh, think about the West Indies visit in Australia so far? Are their performance is as expected? As we, sp as we speak, they're 86 all out. They're 86 all out. All right. Look at you. you. You're good. You, you're good at keeping that. I've got the screen on here, but I, I don't. I don't really uh, yeah. keep following the scores like that. Um, I, th I think the, the the great thing, yeah, the great thing about the West Indies here in Australia is that they beat us in Queensland out the Gabba in a Test match when everyone was writing them off. That is great for cricket. That is great for the longer form of the game. In the one-day scenario, there's been glimpses there where they've put Australia um, – or they've made Australia think a little bit, but I think Australia being in command in that, in that one-day international series. And you've got to remember uh, the Australians aren't playing their full uh, their full lineup, so or their front lineup. They're giving a lot of opportunity to a lot of youngsters out there trying to deepen, um, deepen the uh, strength of, a, of Australian – stocks so for me i think we've got to do something about the west indies i think um, there's a lot of talent there there's a lot of youth but i think more money's got to be invested in the game and talking about that we've got south africa with their third team down in new zealand yeah. um i don't think that's a good thing for test cricket so yeah. just as a supporter austin We've got T20 leagues around. South Africa need their T20 league over there at the moment yeah. to try and raise funds for them. Um, do, do the youngsters around your age prefer test cricket or T20 cricket? Uh, like, it depends, sir. As, personally, if you ask me, if I had to choose a format to watch, I would watch test cricket. Like, I would choose test cricket and I would, I would, not, watch, I would not watch T20 cricket. Like, if I had to choose a format to watch... Because the uh, the enjoyment in Test cricket, like the ups and downs, especially when it's happening between big sides, like when it's happening between. Imagine now a full strength New Zealand team and a full strength South African team. When you see Rabada balling at uh, Kane Williamson, or when you see that's engrossing. That's uh, mm -hmm. that's the box office context you want to watch. Uh, okay, Trent Bolt is obviously not available, uh, but imagine the fast bowlers of Kyle Jamieson against an Aiden Markram. So. When you see all those contests, it's engrossing to watch. But unfortunately, to the players, it's the, they can see more money, uh, especially uh, towards the T20 leagues, and especially in a career which is when you when you're having a 10-year, uh, it's a 10 to 15-year-old uh, cricketing career, and you would want the players would look from the point of view of getting a lot of money, and especially from the boards such as South Africa and New Zealand, especially South Africa and the cricketing board, they are not like. Uh, India or England, where they can generate a lot of revenue and play, pay the players well. So that's why the South African mm -hmm. players are uh, looking to play in more T20 leagues. And just like you see, Quinton De Kock, he could have had a uh, he, he was he could have been a superb Test player also. He retired halfway. Mm -hmm. ODI is also he could have gone on to become one of the greatest South African uh, ODI players. He still is, but he, he would have surpassed probably AB De Villiers if he had played for another. Uh, six seven years with the record, he could have scored ten thousand ODI runs. So uh, it, it it's a bit of a tricky situation for such players because uh, they'll probably prefer uh, money more. But I feel is what I feel is Test cricket should be prioritized more because that's the form of cricket which gives you a lot of name. You'll be remembered more. Now if you are everyone is praise, praising Jasprit Bumrah and uh, for becoming the one of the greats of the game is not because he has done what he has done in T20 cricket because he has done what he has done in Test cricket. And because of his record in Test cricket, so that's why everyone are praising him. So I feel, as a cricketer, if you want that, if you want your name to be up there, it's because it's if you have a good Test career, you can have a good name there. So that's what I feel that people players should prioritize Test cricket more. And what South Africa is doing is a bit. Uh, what South Africa, South Africa has done is not a bit great, but uh, you can't really blame them because it depends on the situation of the board. So that's what's my opinion. I really, I really love your non-biased opinion there, Austin. That, that that's um, that was a, that was a superb, superb answer. I think when I when I look at it now, Mitchell Stark um, has had a wonderful Test yeah. career, and he's just got a big paycheck for, for, for uh, from the IPL. Well, I, I 
Yeah, and he can he can swing the ball with uh, when it's new, and he can get reverse out the back end. And yeah. I I think he's a prize um, scalp for an IPL team, but he's prioritised so Test cricket for a long period of time. Yeah. But when you look at fast bowlers, especially the quality of that, he's got to start looking at um, the longevity of his career because fast bowlers don't, especially when you're bowling 140 plus like him, um, your career is shortened. It's not like a batsman or a spinner where you can you can go into your forties. Anderson's a little bit of a different kettle of fish because he's he's always been a swing bowler rather than a face um, that 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 sheer pace bowler. Um, so there's not quite as much uh, pressure on the body as as someone like a Mitchell Stark or a Brett Lee or um, yeah. or, or others. So if if Mitchell Stark pulls out a Test cricket now, I'd be disappointed on an Australian front, but. I would not be upset with him because he's thinking I've got another five to six years yeah. in my career and I can make good money in the IPL. I've done my due diligence, so I've done my duty to Australia. Um, I, so I, I can accept that even though it would be, it'd be disappointing. But test cricket's got to be got to be put first. Um, with, with that, I'll just ask you one question. This is the last question that we're going to uh, talk about tonight because it's, it leads into an interesting su- subject. Most of the money comes from uh, Indian cricket. There's a billion people there. And for cricket to survive, um, we, we need international cricket. We need the international cricket superstars to help with the yeah. IPL. But on the flip side, we need the international cricket to, to keep flowing. Um yeah because we want that international co- competition. And we're, we're going into multicultural societies now where there's a lot of Indian population here in Australia yeah. Um, yeah. and they, they love their cricket. But where do you draw the line with how much money the BCCI or India can keep funding the rest of the world? That, that That's the big question. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, that is that's tricky, yeah. Yeah, and so that's why I'd, that's why I admire South Africa in a way for going to their T Twenty tournament and trying to finance, uh, be yeah. more financially stable themselves, and not rely on India. Um, it will get England, bigger. T Twenty will get bigger because I feel yeah. it's the, it's going to be the second best T Twenty league. It already is because the attention and the, you can see the S Twenty viewership and all. It's right up there after the IPL in just two seasons now. So I yeah. feel. Uh, they'll, it'll actually get bigger and uh, South Africa's revenue will also increase because of this league. So that's why it's mm-hmm. getting focused a lot, if you see, SA20. Yeah. Now, um, as a supporter, I, d- I just want to ask one more question. You don't have to answer this because uh, it's sort of going into a little bit of a political uh, aspect with the neighbour of India's. Um, when I see cricket and I see the Indian team and the Pakistani team together, they get on so well. There's, yeah, yeah. They're nearly yeah. Really, yeah. Yeah. Um, how much desire do you have, and do you think Indian fans have, to see Pakistan and India play uh, play uh, a Test series together? A lot, especially yeah. for me, sir, uh, because I'm I I was born like I started watching cricket after uh, uh, all this happened. Like I'm not uh, watched an India Pakistan Test series in India, like because yeah. obviously uh, it happened before, right? Uh, so yep, that yep. it's my dream to actually watch, it's, especially the last WTC cycle. I was hoping that they both reach the finals so that we can at least see a test match between those two teams uh, in at in in England. But obviously, it didn't happen. But that's what I want. I as I have a lot of desire to watch India Pakistan play test cricket, uh, to watch Shine Afridi uh, in with the red ball against Virat Kohli, to watch uh, Jasprit Bumrah with against Babar Azam in test cricket. Like it, it would be so so good. Like. Um, but unfortunately, uh, because of the political uh, issues, it's not happening right now. But uh, I feel like I also get too excited when news starts floating around that uh, Australia are asking so that the India-Pakistan match can happen at the MCG in a test match or at Lords. But uh, but nothing nothing will happen because there is always this bad behind the scenes uh, involvement in such issues. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's it's beyond BCCA or it's beyond PCB in such a yeah, yeah. so because of that uh, there's a lot of desire for fans of my age and beyond like those are not watched those contests uh, back before but yeah i mean yeah. it would be really nice to watch a pakistan tour india or india tour pakistan 
especially i don't know what's going to happen in uh, 2025 champions trophy also it's to be held in pakistan and i don't know will it happen there or will india travel there and you yeah, know no idea so what can just what between the two countries uh just just from an outsider's point of view um what would be the most neutral ga- ground that you could play it on uh i would i would feel uh, like if you want i would feel because see both the teams uh, it, instead of playing it in asia i would feel if it's better to play it uh, in australia or england so especially at lords uh, because both the team have good fast bowlers especially right now so uh, i feel that especially now you see amir jamal and there are, you saw the test series uh, versus australia they have good fast bowling talent and i feel uh, if if they're playing a test in australia or england then that will be a really really good contest to watch instead of uh, a test match in asia because then the spinners will come into play and pakistan don't really have good test spinners so then the contest will be one sided but as a test cricket fan i would want to watch a bit more equality and in terms of fast bowling then both the teams have almost equal uh, fast bowling talent in test cricket or india has a bit more superior because of bumrah siraj shami but pakistan are right up there like almost with shain afridi haris rauf if he plays test and then amir jamal as is there there are other paces as well nasim shaif is fit in test cricket is really going to uh, like do really well so i feel that would be a good contest imagine playing india pakistan at lords so yeah oh, that would be, be great, great. I, i'm thinking i'm thinking what about we get on the fastest track in the world and uh, bring the, bring well, both teams well, over here to the wacker <laughs> well, well, that that'll be crazy that'll be great yeah <laughs> that'll be now, that'll, yeah that'll yeah, be really good yeah now austin thanks so much for joining me um yes, yeah, everyone out there so yeah thank everyone you so out much. there you get the opportunity to come on here and uh, have a little bit of banter with me so it's yes. it's thank uh, you so much. it was just great to have you on there and your knowledge you your wonderful uh, years sir a uh, very happy yeah. birthday again and a wonderful year uh, ahead yep so thank you very much mate so uh, you want to get a chance to go live show with me on youtube fill up the google form in the description and submit it uh and you can join me like austin just did on hog out live and hog out is just uh, a little bit of changing words for hang out so we've got hog out instead of hang out thanks very much guys for joining me It was so good to uh, have you all there and you can watch a few clips here and there on uh, Instagram, Facebook and uh, also my Twitter feed as well. We'll we'll cut this long video up and just have a little shorts out there. Thanks very much again guys and thanks for your love of cricket.